Dami i gospoda, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Metro. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about the human animal, which is the word human and animal put together. Yes, that is what these things are named. If you want a very, very quick breakdown to what these things really are, then they're basically just mutated humans that have become primal and animal-like in nature due to their mutations and radiation poisoning. However, if you want that very long answer, then come along with me and I'll explain explain what I found out about them and what I can come up with myself, because it's actually pretty interesting. First off, human mutations. I think this is really important to talk about because the game by no means hits close to reality when it comes to this subject. In our own world, mutation to an extent like we see in the human animal would be pretty rare if not impossible. Normally, if a human is exposed to large doses of radiation and everything that comes along with it, they would usually die very soon after. This is due to the fact that the cells of your body would very quickly degrade into nothing. Parts of you would essentially start dying. Even if the radiation took years to kill you, it would most likely turn cancerous with a plethora of other medical problems along with it. Besides which, the nuke that was meant to have caused all this devastation dropped a mere 20 years before these creatures were around. Mutation on the level of the human animal would take centuries and generations to get to this point that we see it inside of Metro Exodus. Most of those generations would be barely functioning creatures just because of how long the body would need to adjust to this foreign mutation. That is to even suggest that it would survive the very beginning of that process. So with that out of the way, let's talk about what these mutants actually remember from their past lives as humans and some of their more interesting characteristics, because it might actually not be everything you think it is. So something that struck me as strange is that these mutants throw rocks and use them as a type of very primitive weapon. This distances them a lot from a zombie, which is likely, let's be honest, the first conclusion you'd come to upon seeing these monsters, or you'd think of the ghouls from Fallout. They look a lot like undead or ghouls, but despite that, they are in fact living, and to a point, they are intelligent. The fact that they even think enough to use a rock as a projectile weapon is proof enough that they do have some idea of how to use things in their environment to their advantage. This is something that most animals are completely incapable of understanding or even thinking to do. It takes a lot more brain power than you might expect. They also seem to mimic a type of grunting communication, often using this to alert others of potential threats. It's not much in a way of a language, but it still shows enough of an attempt at speech. Maybe they have some distant memories of what it was once like to talk. After all, speaking is technically a muscle memory, and maybe it's something that stayed with them through all their mutations. But they are, of course, extremely aggressive and primal, looking mostly to feed on humans or anything they really can. Which at first you might think, hey, that removes any possibility of them being capable of displaying empathy or looking out for anyone but themselves. They must be very primal, and in that way they must be very selfish and just wanting to survive for themselves. However, they do not and will not kill each other. They don't attack their own kind, instead they all share a very pack mentality and will hunt in drones of dozens at a time. This means they must be intelligent enough to see, smell, and taste the difference between one of their own and a stranger. On top of that, they are also often led by a leader known as the Alpha or Silverback, these variants being a hell of a lot tougher to take down than the normal type of human animal. This whole pack mentality is very similar to wolves, for example, with the idea of strength in numbers and being able to overwhelm your enemies. But it doesn't just restrict itself to the minds of these mutants, since their bodies have also adapted as well. They have actually developed strange canine-like feet as they like to walk around and attack while on all fours, meaning they change from standing to crouching constantly. 
Now this is where things get a little bit strange in terms of coherency, because if these humans were alive and then mutated after the nuke dropped, it doesn't make a lot of sense that their feet would become dog-like, not within 20 years anyway. We don't even know if these mutants are capable of breeding just because they always seem to be the remains of those poor people who got caught inside of the radius of the contamination, that being the, the nuclear contamination. So for all we know, the Humanimal might be a subspecies of human-like beings that exist as their own separate entity. And this is actually quite exciting and interesting because this means they might even be where the future of humanity lies and how it will develop and survive in the new world. Over generations and generations, the likelihood is that they will grow smarter and smarter, maybe to the point where they rebuild civilization but are genetically capable of surviving the terror terrible conditions of a post-nuclear Earth. And that's uh, a bit of a crazy theory, but it's actually kind of a cool idea, and it might explain a few things as to why they're so different from humans, but definitely resemble them in some way. But again, for 20 years to have passed and for this type of mutation to already be happening, it's very, very unlikely. But I don't think realism is something I should be sticking to right now, considering all the facts we're faced with. The reason it's hard to come up with any ideas as to what the Humanimals really are is because it's really a matter of design over function. When the devs were making the game, I don't think they really asked themselves too many questions about how these mutants would actually, you know, function in this world. Because these guys wear loincloths, meaning they must have some idea of self-consciousness or very sensitive genitals, but they are also shown to be very animalistic. It's something that does break the depth of the world because you realise that the thought process and the development behind the ideas was more to look cool than to actually function. Which by no means whatsoever makes this bad or wrong, it just means making a video on the lore is very difficult because we're trying to make coherent sense of something that doesn't make any sense. We're trying to explain something that no one really asked us to explain and that no one really has the answers to, unless someone out there has a better theory, in which case by all means please leave your opinions down below and let's see if we can figure out what these things are, because it's um, it's one of those things that is uh, it's really interesting to think about, but it's just difficult to try and make sense of something if there was no real sensible thought process in the first place behind where they come from or where the history is. As always everyone, thank you so much for watching, if you want to help support the channel then please uh, share the video around, like it, and comment down below telling me what you'd like to see next, and let's see if we can get this out there a little bit more. And if you want to buy me a cup of coffee or something then you can check out my Patreon in the description down below, and thank you so much for those supporting me so far, you're keeping me alive <laughs> and awake. <laughs> Until the next one, you will go and have a very fantastic day. Leaky Cauldron.